Hello there, happy Wednesday. Patrick here again. In yesterday's video, I talked about speaking up for truth and how when we stand up for what's true and what's right, we can um, have an influence to save people, to rescue people from falsehood. Solomon said there's a time to speak and a time to refrain from speaking. So I'm trying to think when should I refrain from speaking? I know that when I go online, there's so many opportunities to respond to differences of opinion. And I've decided that there are certain topics that I just don't comment on. Um, one of them is, um, well, a lot of them are sort of conspiracy things, like the moon landing. People say, well, did they really land on the moon? Because it has absolutely no, um, I feel it has no impact on anything about my life. I don't comment on it. I don't, I don't, I don't care about it. I, I believe that, that, that they went to the moon and they did that and they did all their research and all that kind of stuff. Whether all the missions did or not, I don't know and I don't care. So that topic I don't comment on. The Flat Earth, another one. I see people, they're so convinced and they love to talk about and they have huge numbers of followers talking about the flat earth. I don't comment on it. I believe the earth is round. I think we have satellites that circle the earth and so on and so forth. But when I see people post arguments about why they believe that the uh, a flat earth, uh, what's his name? He was a friend of uh, Joe Rogan. Um, that uh, BJJ guy, I forget his name. Anyway, um, you know, a lot of people, that, that's their pet belief and more power to them. I don't comment. To me, it's almost like somebody has a, a favorite sports team. And if I were to come along and, and give all the reasons why I believe that team is no good, it wouldn't have a very positive impact on that person in terms of trying to build a relationship with them or trying to be their friend. And so there are so many different topics like that that are absolutely inconsequential. They don't matter to my life or to, to my well-being. And so I try, well, it's pretty easy to just not go there. And I'm trying to expand that range. Now, if I look at other topics, American politics, it doesn't affect me, but it kind of affects me indirectly. I try not to comment on American politics because they're not there, we're here. I try and keep them separate. Sometimes it's so tempting, you, you, you can't help but comment because there is a lot of overlap and what they do affects us, of course. Um, and so that's an area that I try and stay away from. Canadian politics is a big one, right? There's a lot of topics within that subcategory that I try and not to comment on. But there's a lot that I do want to comment on. So it's just, I find it hard to know. I find it hard to to hold my tongue and that's something I want to practice more is to start trying to comment less um, especially in the in the public forum where people just go haywire they go nuts I'm thinking of the um, verse that said like a lamb he was silent before his shearers and, and uh, he gave up the 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 right to speak. He gave up everything, of course. He gave up his life. He gave up, you know, absolutely everything. He gave up his power. You know, he said he could have called down 10 legions of angels or however many to rescue him if he wanted to. And, um, but at the end, he even gave up his own right to speak in his own defense. He, he remained silent. And so, um, yeah, it's just something that I've been reflecting on this morning. I was I was reading through Revelation uh, this morning. Just total mayhem, you know. And some people interpret it as allegorical. Some people say it was re referencing uh, um, events that occurred in the first century, perhaps. I have a hard time with that interpretation simply because of some obvious statements that it makes. It talks about a um, an army of... 200 million men 
which wouldn't have been possible at that time. It talks about the thousand year difference, the thousand years between the time the beast and the false prophet are bound up and cast into the lake of fire to the time that the devil gets cast into the lake of fire. There's a thousand year span in between there. So, you know, I'm thinking that these events are hopefully in the distant future because it's just absolute chaos and, and, and you know, it, it's horrific what goes on in, in the, the book of Revelation. And, of course, it talks about the number 666 being the number of the beast. And, you know, if anybody gets that mark in their hand or forehead, then they're essentially condemned. And I do see that as a parallel for today when I look at the number of people that are willing to be marked, so to speak, for the sake of facilitating their community involvement, if you want to call it that. I, I met, um, on, a, on a side note, I met um, a, a, a really nice couple, uh, you know, elderly people. They were both in their 80s, and they had cut themselves off from the world for the past two years, voluntarily. They just totally... Um, you know, they wouldn't want to get within six feet and, and uh, while chatting with them. And I respected that and I didn't didn't uh, give them any hard time or, or anything like that. But I thought to myself, wow, you know, um, just to be so, um, I don't know how to describe it, but I, I didn't comment on it. I just wished them well and, and uh, tried to be a, a friend to them. Um, but to see that our lives are being influenced today on a global scale that wasn't like that before. There'd be activities in one country dealing with this, activities in another country totally different. Now we have this global um, global influence that permeates and crosses borders through the capability of technology, of course, that communication is able to be blanketed all at the same time with variations, of course, happening here and there. Um, but where am I going with this video? I, I just trying to sit back and, and, um, reevaluate what's going on around me and, um, hoping to, to maintain a, a center to try and say, okay, how can I best serve my community? How can I best be a positive influence on the world? And I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, it's an ongoing process. The um, strategy that I've sort of decided upon is uh, because I'm limited in, in uh, my physical capability, I've decided to try and strengthen my mental capability through reading. As you can see around me, I'm, I'm, I'm adding to my book collection every day and uh, I'm excited about reading new books. I especially like to seek out books that I think will challenge me or will prod me into thinking or, or, or um, you know, help me to learn something new, perhaps. And so if I can strengthen my mind, I can strengthen my ability to communicate, perhaps then in the future, I'll be able to comment more intelligently at the right time, as Solomon said, to know when to refrain from speaking and to know when to speak, when to speak up and when to remain silent. And that's something that I'm continuing to work on and um, we'll continue to work on going forward so that I can try and be a better person. I hope I, I hope I succeed. I know that it's a lifelong battle, a lifelong struggle. And um, so, yeah, just throwing that out there as today's update. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. I hope you're happy. I hope you're not getting pulled into too many arguments because there is no end to the number of arguments we can get ourselves involved in. I know that... You know, I see something, I want to comment. And so I have to hold back and just say, ah, let it be, let it be. Again, the first words in one of the Gospels, suffer it to be now. Just let it be for now. In the end, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. And as we see in Revelation 2, it does work out in our favor. It doesn't go well in that book for the saints. They call them the saints. Um, it's a pretty rough ride. But in the end, it does. If we persevere until the end, and this is why I believe we can only have a 
coherent sense of reality if we take into account eternity. If this is all there is, if we only have what we see with our physical senses in this temporal physical universe, then there, it makes no sense. Then we're left with chaos. But if we understand that there is a compensation that takes into account eternity, and as you read through the last chapters of, of Revelation, it becomes clearer and clearer that that's the case. Then everything seems to make sense. All the balance and the karma and the yin and yang and the suffering and the happiness and the joy and the pain get balanced out from an eternal scale. And that's what gives me hope. And that's what I want to share with other people. I want to let other people know, hey, did you know that somebody came and told us how things work, that laid out the truth for us, how we can gain access to the truth, how we can know when we're making mistakes or not. And I make mistakes, you know. Some of my opinions I know are a little off, but I'm working on them every day. <laughs> I'm trying, right? And so he showed us how we can access truth. He explained it quite clearly, actually said, how much more will your Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask, right? The solution that's available to us, to me, to you. And that's what I want to share with people. I don't know how long I'm going to be around for. I'm hoping I live to 104. That'd be great. Sure. Why not? <laughs> but in the meantime, I want to promote what's true. Because, again, if we go back to the book of Revelation, John says that things don't go well for those that love and practice lying, he says, to all those that love and practice lies, to the murderers, and to the other nasty descriptions he gives to those people that don't get to have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, to live for eternity with God. It doesn't end well for those people. And I don't want to be part of that crowd. I want to be part of the crowd that wants to promote truth. Will I make mistakes? Of course I'm going to make mistakes along the way. I'm going to stumble and I might have beliefs that are wrong or misinterpreted or not understood. I know that's going to happen. That's part of the human condition. But I have faith and I have hope in an eternity with God forever who loves me and wants to take me through this life on the right path and guide me through this life so that I make it in the end where he can say, hey, well done. Come on in. And it's a better place, absolutely a better place. It's available to each and every one of us. All we have to do is open our eyes and ears and listen to the instructions, listen to our own internal hearts that will guide us. As long as we open ourselves up to his guidance, as long as we follow the instructions, right? Because we can get guidance from anywhere. And some of that guidance, it leads to chaos and death. We see that, right? We see these, these mass shootings that's going on. Where does that, those people were guided by something that wasn't from God. That's pretty straightforward, right? They were guided by something that was wrong, that was evil. There is a difference between good and evil. You know, there's people out there who say, there is no absolute truth. It's all relative. That's, not, that's, that's a false belief. There is truth that good is better than evil. There's truth that light is better than darkness. There's truth that love is better than hate. These are, these are, they should be self-evident truths, but for a lot of people, they're not. A lot of people believe the opposite. And that's not a good place to be in. That's not where I want to go. I want to go more and more towards truth more and more towards love, more and more towards the light. That's where I want to go. It's a struggle for me, absolutely. But I know that I'm pointing in the right direction and I'm asking God to help me every day. Every day I ask God to help me that I can be a blessing to others, that I can go more towards the light. And I wish that for you as well. If you're watching this, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. I pray you have a fantastic day and um, talk to you again real soon, okay? Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.